Are we good to go? Yes. We're good as we're going to be. <laughs> well, we're close enough for Globesville's lecture today. My name is Professor George Weiner. We today are talking about a little bit of Google Analytics and then getting into some <laughs> marketing and think about them as maybe social media strategies and tactics. I'm not sure how far we're going to make it through all of that, but we will do our best because we're going to start with uh, first Google Analytics and, of course, our own analytics. So, Greg, how are we doing? Administrative, 243. Bam. Bam. Keep that. Minus watch, 1571. That's supposed to what, last week? Okay. What was... Uh, 11 reach. 11 reach. Sweet. It's not memorable. <laughs> Welcome if you didn't lose 100 people in the MLS. <laughs> <laughs> we've, stopped, we've stopped the bleeding on reach. People have stopped signing out, as you remember last time. It was minus some number of... 100. 100. 100 people or some mod. Perfect number of watched. Watched. Greg, should we be happy or sad about these numbers? I'm pretty happy with these numbers. Why are we happy today because about these numbers? 243 minutes watched is like four hours, but I mean, minutes created is four hours, but I can't do the math in my head, but that's a ton of minutes watched for just four hours of content. Yeah, well, why is it just the recently created content? This week. It was just, just the stuff that we did this week. Of course, but. Let's say I posted a video of me being awesome about, I don't know, a year ago. Is that counted toward this? If they watched it, yes. Of course, right? Yeah. So we're now realizing some of the gains from building over time, what's called the long tail traditionally. And so it's not just what we created in the last week, but we have like, think about this as watches over time. And so we have our video on you know, the first, first semester. But even still, the fact that things we originally created last year are still adding toward this overall total. Videos do this. Pages on our website will do this. Over time, we'll get still gains of volumes of content and be able to play with that as an economy of, hey, let's refer somebody who's maybe watching a video here to somebody who is something we've just posted today. Does that make sense? So that number, I'm not super surprised, is going to continue to grow unless we completely stop creating content for a while. But this is a great number, actually, because this means that it's going to be flowing through our system for quite some time. Yes? What were the minutes created last week? It's a good question. Because it seems like 200 is roughly around the number we I think it was. Created. I think that was what it was. Okay. Is that our pace for what we've been creating? Well, last week in particular, we had 11 live um, shoots between morning meetings and Pangea shows and, and two water That may be boards. true. But that's, the um, number, that's, that's what we're seeing right now. I mean, it's created, so we created those minutes last week. Okay. I can do that right now if you want me to. Would you mind? Actually, that, am I Absolutely. So what it, what's interesting now is we have no frame of reference. We can't tell, we can tell how fast we're driving, but we can't tell if we're like on the NYT side street or over on the like Grand Central Parkway. And it makes a huge difference. Is this slow or fast? So one of the things maybe we can ask Greg is, what is maybe one of our averages, or perhaps this week's share a chart of how we're doing, so we can see a trend. Because if we're like going down or up, one seventy one we created. So we actually created more content this week than we did last week. And what about the week before that? Before that, we created two fifty. So two weeks, two weeks, so it's 250 should be the, what we create every week. The week before that, I don't know what happened. Uh, what do we do? Uh, oh, spring break. Spring break. Spring break. Oh, no, because I didn't count spring break. So we went 250, down to 171, 243. Before that was zero. <laughs> and so at a certain point, you're going to help us figure out what our expected average is, above or below what our set average, what our goal should be. We have a goal for the semester for total number of created, and that's what ultimately we should be looking toward. What is our average per week that we need to hit for our goal so that we know where we're driving? And we actually do have these goals uh, that are set. That's a good question. OK. Raise your hand if in your future career you believe you will be needing to, your company will have a website. Is this everybody's hand up? 
Why, what do you think you're going to be doing that your company will not have a website? <laughs> I cannot wait to hear it. And it better be okay for television. Because I will always be, I know work under a company like that, you know, I'll always be like a travel anchor or traveling and, and I have no plans of settling in under one thing, you know. What is your job? What are you going to be doing? I'm going to be a travel anchor or a, uh, like So a, you're going to sit in front of a camera at some point. Yeah. Is 100% of your content going to be on cable? Yeah. Only broadcast across the network? Uh, no, that I don't know. I don't Unless know you anything. find a freaking time machine <laughs> and go back to freaking 1992, I guarantee you you're going to be caring about things like this <laughs> online. There will be a website associated with what you do. It is impossible. Again, asterisk time machine. I know you don't like this thing. So, which brings us back to anything I say must be hyper relevant to what we're going to get into. Alrighty. Hyper. Alrighty. I mean, you walked into that one. <laughs> All right, so right here, we've got two types of metrics. I'm going to revisit Google Analytics. I'm going to be touching on it every class, even just a little bit, because it's hyper-relevant, again, to everyone's career, because we're all going to have a website associated with what we do, unless we find a time machine. Qualitative, quantitative. And this is, for qualitative, this is how good, and this is how many. So we remember from last time when we were going through... When we were going through Google Analytics. And I'll turn this so our viewing audience at home can kind of see it. Over here, let's do a quick review. What? What is a visit? What's a visit? When you go to the website. Okay, what if I go to the visit? What if I go to a website five times over the course of a month? Five visits. And what about unique visitors? If I went to the visit, if I visited that site five times over the course of the month, just one, one unique visitor. Unless you're coming from a different computer. Unless you're coming from a different computer. What's page view? What's a page view? Wait, what's a unique visitor? So the unique visitor. Let's say I go on my. Yeah, unique IP addresses. Right, unique device. Think of them as unique devices, okay. as opposed to visits where I can take my same unique machine and every single day check so out it's, the it's site. Two hundred seventy-one different people per site. Yes, okay. the proxy for different people. Page views is number of individual pages I went to. So let's say I'm sitting there and I click through every single page of the site. Boom, whole bunch of page views. Pages per visit is simply the um, pages number over the visit number. Visit duration. Remember is that time on site, the average together amount of time people are spending on the site, remembering the fact that if someone bounces, meaning they only come to one page of the site and leave, that they count as zero time on site because Google Analytics can't count that. And then percent new visitors. Percent new visitors shown over here. It's giving you an idea of like how many people are you re-engaging with. The way they figure out new versus returning, does anyone know? How would you possibly figure this out? New versus returning users. Visits, we should say. Something about the IP address. But wait a minute, what if it's multiple computers logging into the same sort of NYIT network? It's still different though, isn't it? So how does Google Analytics actually track what's going on when somebody comes to the site? How can it tell where you just came from? How can it tell, let's say, uh, the site that was referred to? So it's the word cookie. Oh. Ring a bell. Cookies. Yeah. Cookies are those things that we kind of say but don't fully understand. The way I want you to think about it is it's kind of like a really bizarro shopping bag that chases you around all day. And let's say you like left in the morning and you went to Dunkin' Donuts. It's kind of like the shopping bag. They're saying, oh, you went to Dunkin' Donuts. Let me put this into your bag and then not throw it away. If I go to the dining hall and go get uh, food there into the shopping bag, 
I go buy gas in the shopping bag. So now, whenever I go into a site that has Google Analytics, it says, oh, hey, what do you got in that bag? And goes in, takes out where you just came from, along with some other information. And in addition, it says, oh, before you go, let me put this in there. And it puts in a little bit of information from your site into a cookie that stays with you throughout the day. So the way it can tell new versus returning is it can tell from your browsing behavior in that active browser that over the course of two years, have you been back here? And this is a, anywhere from a six month to two year uh, thing that stays in your cookie bag. I know, kind of a bizarre thing to think about, but that's how they're doing it. You're like really weird and you refresh your cookies. So if you, if you clear your cookies, so of course if you clear your cookies, then no go. Right, you're, you're able to, to beat the system. Most people don't do that. OK, so I want to get back to, all right, our future careers. We're dealing with websites. How do we know what's good and what's bad? How do we organize all of these things? Well, it's the how good or how many. We have to think about what our metrics are actually counting. So let's organize these just so we get a true sense of what we're talking about. Visits, is that a qualitative or quantitative? Is that a how good or how many type of count? How many? Why? That could just be you going like this. Sure. It's just counting. Yeah. It's counting how many things, the times, uh, how many sessions there were. How about unique visits? Yeah, how good? How good? So why would that be how good? Can you tell how happy the 270th person was? Or what? If they went to more pages, maybe. No, because. In isolation. Would you say in order to be a unique visitor, you, don't, you can't just go to the site and then just leave? Yeah, that's, uh, or is that, that's bounce rate. It's bounce rate. Yeah, yeah, no. So, like, so I could still be unique and have only gone to a single page and bounced, meaning I only came to one page of the site. But you've gone to the site. So is this a quality or quantitative? You still think it's how good. But you can't tell me how good the 271st person uh, was on the site. You can't tell me if that number goes up, we think it's good, but in and of itself, it's a count still. In isolation, it's simply a count of unique people versus visitors. You'll see when we get uh, to what's a how good metric. So what about page views? I would say these are all well, it seems like it. Well, hold on. So page views, like it's a count. It's a count of page views. Um, and we're thinking about how we're going to practically apply this when we look at traffic source, when we look at geographic region. What about pages per visit? What would this be a proxy for? Well, if this number, let me say it this way. If this number goes up, can I tell, what can I tell about my site? Well, if this number were 15, what would that mean about what the people are doing? It's a good site because you are visiting, you are spending more time on it. That means it's a good website. Right? Because you're going, each yeah. visit means like, oh my gosh, I can't yeah, freaking yeah. wait. I got to go through 15 pages of this thing. Thanks, mom. Just like the way we have the website set up, you have to go through all of the pages. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> hey, welcome to Glowstone. Click here. <laughs> Click here if you want to blame George. Right. <laughs> That's what they do. But a lot of sites do that, and it's hilarious. They're like, oh, you want to see this photo show? Oh, got to reload the page. Click here to begin slideshow. You're like, why? Click here. You go to next, next yeah, page. Yeah. It might as well just say, yeah. click here to help our metrics. Yeah. Um, which click is here to get us an A. Terrible. Click here to get us an A. Follow us to get an A. OK, average visit duration. Is that a how good or how many? Qualitative, quantitative? How good, how good. because you are taking time to if the site is good, then only you're going to stick But it's just a count of time. It's average visit duration. You take out from the how good the website is. <laughs> you're going to go meta on me. But time is money, and they spend their time with us. We're rich! Almost. But absolutely, the average visit duration is a good proxy. And I'm using the word proxy deliberately, meaning that 
I can tell that if this number goes up, I should be happier. So in the future, not 1992, in the future, <laughs> when you put out your international news reporting, would you like to see a high average visit duration for people watching your awesome reporting or a low one? High. Why? Important time. <laughs> They're wasting our time. <laughs> <laughs> spending it. Well, we're not going to waste time. We want them to waste time with us. I hope at some point you are an anchor somewhere <laughs> and we can capture this moment and just like put it back up onto the YouTube or whatever the tube people are using. Okay, bounce rate qualitative or quantitative? Why? Are we happy or sad when this number goes up? But the number, we love numbers going up. All numbers should go up. Number, because the person just bounced. She loves it. All of that. She's a believer now. She doesn't even believe in websites. I don't believe in websites. Okay. Exactly. So we put bounce over here. Percent new visitors. Good, good, good. 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 You're just saying the word good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because those many idiots again came and the new ones came. Well, you, have again a, you have a real respect. You have a real respect for your audience. She's all, she's all, she's all hyped up on analytics right now. I can't help that. Folks get excited, get all riled up about this business. I want to go with quantitative. You want to do is account. So what if the job of our site was to, I don't know, bring people back again and again so they can buy our widgets or buy our product, our like fashion products? Would I want to see a lot of loyal people or do I want to see a lot of new people every week? Is it a what does it matter? New people spend new money. But why loyal? What does that tell you if, let's say, I'm, I have a, a fashion website and my job is to sell shirts? They like it. They like it. And not only that, they, they, want, want, to keep like they want to keep coming back. And so if I saw 100% green, I'd be like, ooh, the people that come here once don't seem to come back for two years. That's a bad thing. So uh, again, I like the fact that we're talking about in context, but most of the time, we care about this pie going one way or the other. More often than not, we're interested in re-engaging people. So it's called, like we're thinking about like the other side of that number then. So we're not thinking about the 40%, we're thinking about the 60 Yeah, but the 40% can come from anywhere. Like so was I right for from the 60 were you right about what? Uh, anything that's like an average or a percentage is most likely going to be qualitative. Either as a, anything that's a strict number is going to be. Yeah, as a. Like I hate that. I hate. I hate the. Rule. I hate averages in general, <laughs> but yeah, that's actually like a good cheat towards it. That's a good cheat. I mean, it's aggregating things, and you can can tell. Um, ultimately, everything matters within context. So, I've got a question for you all. How, I mean, is Glowsville global? How would we find out if Globesville is in fact global? Where would we look? We'd ask Greg. Oh, well, can we see the language? Is that the language? You oh, pick country, right? territory. <laughs> and then you see 92% in the United States, and you go, aww. Thank you, but that means we are global. Wait, you said 92? 92% yeah. in the United that's States. That's still 8%, bro. Yeah, that's 8%. 8%. That's better than no percent. I feel like that's cool. This should be so cool. Is, is, is Globesville global? global? That's what pretty funny. So first off, how does it tell what? How does it freaking know the language? It's set. Set it has cookies. It's it can tell. It. It tell the browser what it's set to automatically. Okay, so if I'm on French, I'm probably, probably, not <laughs> local. <laughs> All right. Let me ask again. Are those all the spots where people look at? Really? Is that true? 
It's not a derogatory term. Uh, spot is actually, yeah, it is, but I'm not going to Is it? Yeah. But I'm not going to go. Let's not go there. I don't want to, I don't want to learn something new on camera right now. <laughs> is, is Globesville global? Uh, rough, getting there. Yeah, it's global. There's no dark blue in the global areas, but there's Well, obviously, we see a lot of activity in New York because we're all here and Donnie's obsessively on the site. Now, we're also seeing spots across the globe, and this is only for the past month. And if I extended the time frame, which we can do, we'd probably see a lot more robust international site traffic. In this way, we can actually go back and say, hey, Greg, how many countries are we in? Put that up as like a brag factor. Are we in you know, 10? Are we in 20? Are we in 30 countries? Closeville now in 30 countries. Any one of our sites and future careers we could be able to tell this sort of thing. And what's more and exciting is that we can now use these metrics to tell how, oop, I'll pull this up a little bit. We can tell this based on quality and quantity. Ah, killing me, Smalls. I'm trying to show us in context so I can actually see yeah. So now you see what I'm doing, right? You can see on the side the actual performance of these against the metrics. Oh, this oh, is city, yeah. New York. <laughs> and Let's see East Islip. Number nine, Everett Island. 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 Everett for example, do the people in New York City um, versus Old Westbury, which would you say like us more? How do you tell that? All right. So the bounce rate, you're looking at immediately a how good metric, saying, all right, twice as many people in New York City leave us as opposed to Westbury. Also bounce rate. Both are both very low, by the way. What are other things we can look at? Also, on Old Westbury, 35% are new visits. With New York City, 60% of people have come or new visits. That means no one's coming back from New York City. Percent new visits. Um, I think you may have that reversed. No, right? 40% are, are, are return visitors from New York. So 60% are new visits. 18% are new visits from New York. Percentage new percent new visits. Percent yeah. new visits. Yeah. Wait, what's the two different? Percent, sorry, percent new visits. Remember, if you're saying like returning visit is something you want, it's the inverse. I want to actually look at pages. You said what I was saying. What are the two numbers? George is right. I see the number there. Pages per visit. Let's look at pages because we don't necessarily care for our particular brand right now. What I'm asking is actually the, the region. So, what other things can we tell that Old Westbury is better than New York? What about pages per visit? Do we want oh, that? We're here, so. Obviously. Obvious. It's almost five pages per visit with 3.58 pages. Exactly. So we want this number to be higher, and it's higher in a Westbury by almost two. Oh, by one, I'd say. Um, and now what about average visit duration? Uh, it's about three seconds. Three minutes. Excuse me, my bad. Wow. <laughs> Three minutes longer average time on site, which is very significant, actually, especially because this bounce rate is so low. We get a lot more time spent on the site from Old Westbury. Not that surprising. Yeah. Okay. So, any question that we have, we could actually compare different regions we were in. We could tell like market share. We could tell whether or not that region liked us. We could tell if we needed to sell more widgets or create more custom content that's associated with, let's say, Paris, um, who doesn't seem to like us that much. Uh, no. oh. <laughs> en français? No. 
we can do this. This sort of which one is, uh, we could say, of course, which one, it's usually easy, which one's sending us more traffic, but we could also say which one is sending us better quality traffic. And we can do this not even by region. Again, remember, we can do this by device. We could do this by the referring source. So I could compare Twitter versus Facebook versus NYIT site. We could look at any number of metrics on the, on the side here in order to tell that. We can also look by content type. So which content pages. We won't do that today. We're going to save that. But this is just an example of showing us what is possible. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Now, what is that final thing over to the right of that thing that we didn't talk about? I'm using the word thing a lot. Conversions. What is a conversion? What's a goal? Well, what is it in soccer? <laughs> right? It's the only thing people really care about. So staying, staying with soccer, right? we can tell average time on the field by the players. right? And after a certain amount of time, people are like, I'm real tired. Put me, put me back in, coach. <laughs> we can tell all these metrics, but what, do, what wins games? Goals. Goals. I don't care how long our team had possession of the ball. If we're not putting goals in the net, we're not getting points. In Google Analytics, we can actually set up exact goal tracking to this end. We can set up when somebody does something desirable, scores a point. What would that be for Globesville? What is it that we're trying to drive? Reach, why? That's a freaking goal, because when they are one of the people we can reach, we can say, hey, why don't you come back to the site? So that's something we probably want to track. Too bad Donnie's not here. Donnie! <laughs> Donnie! That's OK. You can watch back on the recording. Does everyone follow that? <laughs> so let's be very specific. What could we track on the Globesville site right now? So that's an interesting question we can come back to. But what are the tangible things on our site that we want to do? Remember, we said reach. What drives our reach? That is like a couple steps back, right? If there's no content, nobody's coming. You're right. But once they're on there, they're looking at your amazing reporting from the field. What is it that we want them to click on? What do we want people to do? I hope this is not. Was this going to autoplay for me? Yeah. Stop that. Oh, boy. Oh, this is so it's all happening. <laughs> <laughs> all right, anyway. What do, we want people, what do we want people to do? Watch. Of course. We want them to watch. What will we'll cause them to come back to this site? Having the content not stink. What drives our reach numbers? The answer is literally on the screen right now. George. George has <laughs> reach numbers. I feel like we're in the bizarre world. <laughs> this is obviously too much for you all. <laughs> seeing, seeing yourselves has captured your imagination. Oh my god. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I, I just want to see it get worse and worse. Stop. <laughs> Don't leave. Yeah. Go back. It's too funny. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. All righty. Exploring infinity is over. It's over and done. You didn't see when you yelled at yourself. <laughs> You're gonna have to go back and watch. That's a reason to go back and watch. Okay. I'm waiting for that one. What do we want you to do? Follow us on media. Twitter and Facebook and yeah. Instagram. And what do we want to track? I want to track when somebody clicks on this. <laughs> I want to track when somebody gives us your email. Okay. These are all goals in my mind because it drives up our reach number. If our reach number goes up, 
our ability to communicate with people and remind them that we have awesome content to come back to the site goes up. Therefore, I want to see what it is, when it is, how it is, which content, which referral source is driving these goals. So we can score more goals. So we're going to increase our reach. Right now, we're playing a game of soccer where there's a brick wall in front of the goal. We can't tell what's going on. It's a terrible game. No one's going to win. We want to set up goal tracking. And inside of Google Analytics, we can do that. Now, you also mentioned that there was like a time on site. Like, what do you mean by that? You said that would be a goal. Why are you talking so loud? Um, can, we, can we track average time on the site? As long as you're on the site, you're obviously watching. So there's something that we care about with regard to the individual visitor. So forget the average, right? And why do I hate averages? Because, because America. Bill Gates walked into the room, we'd all be millionaires, but not really. Exactly. Everyone understand that? No. Noisy outliers. Oh. You understood that and not the. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> so I've got. Has he had his marker drop for this semester yet? No, he hasn't. He hasn't no, I yet. saved that for the last class. Anyway. I can't tell if my distribution, that's the key word, I can't tell what my distribution looks like when I've got an average. And when we have um, an average number, our head immediately goes to this perfect little parabola where we have a nice little arc and we assume everyone evenly distributes out. Right? The average height of the American male is 5'8", five, five, and that means the next person like drops down nicely. But we can't tell if it's an inverse. We can't even tell if it's a noisy outlier here, nothing over here, saying, what is the average income for everyone in this room right now? And if Bill Gates walked in, his income is bajillions of dollars. And so our average, we'd all be millionaires. That doesn't make any sense. Getting back to your point, long-winded way of getting back to your point, the goal could be that we want to know when an individual person hits maybe a threshold of four minutes on the site. When we have an individual person, like right here, this person hits that point. And we want to count that every time. That could be a goal. Is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Brilliant. Because now we have, hey, we also care about when there are individual people that care enough about our content to sit and click around and watch infinite loops of George yelling at the TV for four minutes. That's awesome. We want more of that. And we can actually track that as a goal as well, set that up as a unique event. We can have upwards of 25 goals, I think, at this point inside of Google Analytics. So we'll be pushing on Donnie a bit to add that as development. Any questions on that topic? So what is the goal conversion rate? What is the goal conversion rate is your question? Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that, I think I think that's, that's what you Getting back to it, you should be able to answer this now. What is a goal conversion rate? As soon as you know it's a rate, it's something over something, right? Yeah. Uh, to get a rate, it's completion rate over time. roughly goals over visits. How many total people looked at this thing? How many people scored? What would be a, in soccer, what would be a goal completion rate? What are the numbers? It would be, in soccer, what would it be? What's our scoring percentage based on? Yeah. Has anyone heard of the term shots on goal? Yes. OK. What is a shooting percentage calculated based on? How many times you shot the thing and made it in? It's the same. It carries across for goal conversion rate. right? It is success over attempts. And then you get a percentage rate. So if we're trying to, if our goal was to have someone browse the site for five minutes, mm -hmm. if we had five visitors and only one of them did it, it would be five over one. Only, only one person stayed for five minutes. Strike like that, reverse it. One over five. There you go. And so it'd be A? Very close to, I think it's 
Twenty percent conversion rate. <laughs> it gets a, but you get what we're looking yeah, yeah, at that, yeah, yeah. because then you kind of get like a quality score on top of that for a conversion rate. Let's say the point of our page is to sell um, this pen, and I want to know how can we sell this pen better and better and better, because my job depends on selling this pen on this website. What would I care the most about? Super awesome pen. It's an expo. Are you going to be the little tool I would care about conversion rate. The point of this website is to sell this freaking pen. So if I have a conversion rate of 0.5%, I'm going to lose my job. If I have a conversion rate of 10%, I'm starting to do better. I can test things. As soon as I have this, I can build a better website designed to sell this pen, this shirt, this whatever it may be. This is so far from algebra. <laughs> this is like Mickey Mouse algebra. This is not I haven't even mentioned. This is not algebra at all. Okay. <laughs> but this is how we sell. I'm teaching you how to sell more things online. We're able to look at these things. We could look at goal conversion rate. We could say, oh my gosh, are we doing better in Paris? Are more people buying from Paris? Are more people watching from there? What is our conversion rates? And we can play with that. We can create more products. We can create more content in line with that. Any questions with that, that topic? I want to be mindful of time because I was told I had to stop at 10.15. And I have... You can do another four or five minutes. Yeah, that scares me. All right, I'm going to change. I'm not going to get into my Prezi tactics, but nice job. What was your Prezi on? Um, I had to do a uh, chapter review on um, the Prezi Pro and Prezi Pro Plus. Oh, self-letter writing? What is that? Basically, the chapter is about like, um, how like, we're not writing letters anymore. It was like, the history of like a letter. Um, it went back to like postal British, how they would deliver level letters through like Carriage and stuff like that. So I have like videos and sounds pretty awesome. It's actually amazing. I'm very pleased with myself. Should share it with everybody. Yeah, let's Sounds cool. I don't want any feedback. You want no, I want no feedback. She's so cool. Okay. Just trust me that it's amazing. Okay. So micro micro lesson changing gears completely and talking about management and I like to think about management because I deal with digital teams and I'm trying to build a team because if my team doesn't work my company doesn't work and my website doesn't work so getting into how you want to be as a manager completely different topic I know but there are three R's anyone from the old class remember what my three R's are Don't ask me. that dictate how we want to be as managers how we want to interact in the workplace Hmm? Are we, are we guessing? Yeah, you can guess. Because oh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought respected, but I guess that's not because you're writing roles, so I guess I don't know. Respected, yeah, so. Rehabilitation. Brief. Resignation. Reliability. By the way, role power, role would be I, I'm the teacher, I can make you do things. Like, stand up right now. Do it. <laughs> do it! So that's role power. <laughs> you can sit down. <laughs> Reputation. Look, I've started my own company. If you stand up right now, it'll help you get an internship. Trust me on that. I lied, but thank you for standing up. That's reputation. I know it. I knew it. What would be the What's that? What's this last? What it? What would be the final way that I could maybe get somebody to do a thing? Revenge. Repercussion. Well, that's 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 up here. I love this art. Results. <laughs> Relationship. <laughs> so this final way, hey, we're buddies. How about we stand up and go get a coffee? Okay. So, <laughs> so there's different ways of getting people to do a task. To you know, here's our 
company goals, here's how we get things done. And I think a lot of new managers come in with this sort of mindset that like, if only I were in charge of everything, I could just tell people what to do and finally things would run properly around here. Only to find that everyone on their freaking team hates them when they yell. How did you feel when I commanded you to stand up? A little confused. <laughs> but whatever, you did it, right? I don't think he liked it. No, he didn't like it at all. And what would happen if I did that again and again? I would start to show us. Exactly. For the rest of the semester, you should always make it. Just go to a reputation. Even go on rate my professor. No one has ever rated me on rate my professor. Fact. Oh, that's gonna oh. change. That's gonna change. You're way too lazy to do it. Fact. <laughs> also fact. I know this. I've been teaching a year. <laughs> You're gonna forget instantly. Anyway, what I'm challenging you to think think about is what what order would we put this in? Uh, raise your hand if, and I'm saying which of these we should be using for the best possible outcome for our team. Who would rank role for number one? Get things done, he stood up, nothing, nobody? Okay, who would rank uh, reputation? Okay, one vote there. Why would you say reputation? That's like the first impression you give to a person when they start respecting you. If you have a good reputation, people start respecting you. What is reputation you. based on? This is a good point. The trust and the confidence you win of people, you know, if you're over a, time. Uh, over time, so yeah, yeah. it's like a trust you build up and the confidence you build up. So now you've got a reputation. So you, they are gonna listen to you because now you have the reputation. That's the end result, though. It took some time to build that, yeah. right? When I first walked in the room, actually, uh, Dawn had no respect for me whatsoever. She might have thought you were. Asleep. It took a lot. She actually <laughs> probably thought I was. <laughs> Dawn had little respect for me over time. That's not true. It's true. I remember. That has changed. That has changed over time. That's not true at all. Because I've had a lot of respect from you from the beginning. I was excited that you were here because I was so disappointed with all my other teachers, and I told you that. It's literally being stream right now. That's all right. That's all right. Reputation. Right reputation is earned. It's based on past credentials. It's based on performance. What about um, who would say relationship? Yeah. All right. So why why did you raise your hand for relationship? So it actually, you're, you're actually tying together some crazy things here. You're like, actually, it's all even about the loyalty of the site. If we want loyal customers, why don't we want to breed loyalty of our employees? Why don't we want to build that same sort of uh, thing? Interesting. Who else? Why, why did you raise your hand for a relationship? Oh, yeah, you're reluctant. Why did you raise your hand for a relationship? Um, if you're like, sort of build like a strong relationship with the person, it makes it easier to work with that person. It's easier to work with, yeah. keyword. And some great leaders even say that they report to their direct reports. They want to make sure that they can do their jobs. I report to you all. How can we get this done? Let them take, letting them take ownership of their work is ultimately the best way to be leading a team. But you don't have to believe me. Keep these in the back of your mind and think any time that you are now in the workplace or even in the classroom, think about where is this command coming from? Like if you have to do homework or if you have to restock shelves or if you have to go to somewhere to report on something, how are, you work <laughs> how are people managing you? And then how are you then in turn going to choose to be as managers is uh, something that you're all going to have to figure out. But hopefully. This stays in the back of your mind. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you so much.